If you've had any tooth fillings in the past, I apologize for the background audio. A drill and high speed drill bit would have been the ideal tool here, but my drill bits seem to have vanished. The CM690 was one of the most popular Cooler Master cases over the years. I bought mine back around 2010 when I last built myself a desktop. I was drawn to its impressive airflow and capacity for many fans. I also bought my first liquid cooling setup, which consisted of a 240mm radiator made by SwiftTech. I got into the cryptocurrency craze while it was at its peak and purchased an additional 360mm radiator to cool both a Vega 64 and a 390X graphics card. At the time, having a radiator sit beside the case seemed like the ideal solution, minimizing downtime and cost. I'm looking forward to building myself a new desktop in the next couple of months, and while looking at new cases that support a 360mm and 240mm radiator, I saw many which had restrictive front panels, mostly covered with tempered glass. I wasn't sure how restrictive to airflow the covered front would be. I decided to have a crack at modding my CM690 to fit the 360mm radiator up front. I had managed to fit the 240mm radiator up top with slight modifications when I bought it a decade ago. The 5.25 inch drives are a thing of the past unless you have a specific use case, which I believe is pretty rare these days. 3.5 inch drives seem to be fading as well, except for slow long term storage, which I already have covered by my home server. A computer case is meant to house and protect all of your computer components. It should have adequate airflow for thermal envelope your parts require. Some people like lights. I choose function over beauty any day when it comes to my computer. How many people have actually seen your desktop computer other than in a picture or a video online? I created this video on a Phantom X6-1100T, the old 6-core processor, in Linux using software rendering. It was painfully slow. I'm really looking forward to a new build. The fans I bought many years ago were highly rated at the time for radiator cooling. Static pressure fans weren't really commonplace. The fans that I have are the Skype D12 SM12. They're what I would consider moderately loud. I bought these because they fit between the metal and mesh screen at the top of the case, with a few minor modifications to the plastic top. For my new build, I bought the Pulse Width Modulated Static Pressure Performance Version Corsair SM120. I would say they are moderately quiet, but are currently stuck at 100% as there is only one Pulse Width Modulated header on my old motherboard, and I spliced in my water cooling pump's RPM wire to that header to read my pump speed. When installing the radiators and fans, I should have measured the depth with a toothpick and used screws that matched that length. That would have avoided the failure I encountered later in the video. The old hoses shown here are 3 8 inner diameter, 5 8 outer diameter. They're quite thick and not prone to kinking. I bought these in conjunction with the half inch barbs. Only having to top off the fluid twice, I had no leaks in 9 years until modifying it to fit the Vega and 390X. I believe the hoses are made of Tigon, the original distilled water and hyperlube supercoolant additive was still in use till today. I plan on reusing the water block, which was the highest rated at the time of purchase, a SwiftTech Apogee XT. I had lapped it previously and intend to do so again for the next build. I will likely have to fabricate a new bracket to fit whatever processor I end up using in the near future. The buildup of crud shown here is after 10 years of regular use. This brush I found on Amazon had a very gentle scrub which did not affect the fine copper fins. The cooler bracket shown here was never meant to be used on an AM3 motherboard, it just happened to work.
I didn't apply any thermal paste, and I used screws that were too long at this point. I was only doing a dry fit for the hose length. Always be careful when using a propane torch. This was a bad idea, and I figured out a better approach after a little thought. This actually was more difficult than it needed to be, and left the hose looking even worse. This Vega actually seems to have a slight bend in it. The pump is a Swift Tech MCP355 part number 71730 with an XSPC acrylic reservoir. It's much quieter once the air pockets have left the screen. I should not have melted the hose with a torch. The steam from the kettle worked perfectly to relax the tension on the hose. I also suggest not having a hot kettle in front of you while you work. I decided to try to braze the leak in the radiator. This was unsuccessful. Unless you're constantly upgrading your computer, I don't see a need for a proper drain in the loop. The shop back and straw method works well enough for me. still need to flush the system again. I just wanted to leak test it for a while. I added a drop of dish soap in the meantime while the desktop is not in daily use. At this point, one of the screws had a bad thread and I ended up breaking it off in the rear support bracket. Always take the time to do the job right. A few minutes of preparation can save a lot of rework. fans really moved the air. I'm impressed with the cost to performance ratio. This 650 watt power supply was able to power both the 390X and the Vega 64 while mining cryptocurrency 24-7 for about a year. I'm really impressed with its performance. What do you think? Should I get a new case? or put that money towards more performance in my new machine. Should I see how blocking the front of the case for one inch affects the overall cooling performance? Thanks for watching.